style. This is an old man thing. What Carson did not tell you is Carson's been flat on his back for weeks with a back problem. He's got a blood pressure of about 185 over 110. Quite frankly, Carson shouldn't be here. But Carson gave his word that he was going to speak, and Carson showed up, and that's what vets do. Well done. Carson is a, he's a DPM. He's one of our, our best Toastmasters. He easily hit all of the required skills. Vocal variety, uh, body language, hand language. He's a, he's a skilled season Toastmaster. He did a beautiful job. He hit everything. What I found impressive was he hit the difficult part, which is hitting that emotional note in a speech where it doesn't seem contrived. Uh, you, you, I was on the edge of my seat. I felt like I was in those stories. I winced at one point. Excellent. Well done. Phenomenal speech. Your, your stories were amazing and, and heartbreaking, honestly. The only suggestion for your whole speech I could come up with as a coaching point would have been when you were talking about the, uh, the portrait of the wall, the Vietnam wall, you, you've got a reflective surface behind you, and had you not been half crippled, would, you could have walked over and leaned, and it literally would have given, given the visual of the speech. That, I mean, that's just a little thing, but phenomenal speech, well done all the way through. Uh, one, thank you for your speech. Uh, two, thank you for your work with the vets, because that is God's work, man. That is awesome. And two, obviously, heartfelt thank you for your service. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So, for our second evaluation, it's great to see you back at the podium. Toastmaster, Sean S. Oh. Oh. Yes, adopt the threads of a mundane discourse. Envelop yourself in the meaty words of pontification that Tom gave us today. Tom, you did a phenomenal job. And I'm going to start off, one of the things that you did phenomenally well, besides just having the jacket, that uniform really added to your presence, you commanded the lecture much like he commanded a ship. His, vo his voice up here made you pay attention. There was no lulls in that speech where anybody drifted off. Everybody's eyes were focused up here because Tom commanded this room and he did an excellent job of that. The other thing you had, amazing clarity enunciation what you were doing. You used some great phrases up here. You had a different kind of normal. Yes, we agree. A tradition unfettered by progress. <laughs> you could use that, I'm sure, in the future. <laughs> when you got up here with that presence, you, you, you had that ethos that we talk about, the three tenets of a good speech, ethos, pathos, and logos. The others, you had, you had that integrity. You showed that you had the experience here. Everybody believed you were who you were. There was no doubt in anybody's mind you were on that ship. You had that connection to 9 11. Pathos, you obviously are very passionate about what you do. And Logos, we followed your speech very well. To challenge yourself, what I would do, add a little more vocal variety. When you hit those emotional moments, maybe you push down a little bit. Walk a little bit slower. Your humor was absolutely on point. And finally, your gestures. I think you did a great job. Feel free to flail your arms the next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I'm evaluating Ty Patton, and it's something pretty difficult to do because he's such a good and seasoned speaker, but I noticed that every speaker has a certain style. 
they follow a certain pattern. He likes to stand in front of the lectern, so every time he does a speech, he's always in front of the lectern. I think that he does that to connect with his audience a little bit better than standing behind. And then he asks thought-provoking questions. But he's so good at it that he lets it sit for just the right amount of time without letting your mind wander off somewhere else, but also allowing you the time to think about the question and try and answer it in your head. When he speaks, every word is said with a chosen emphasis. I noticed that he's often loud at the beginning and then slowly getting softer at the end. Or in this case, when he went to Chili's, he was very soft talking about that personal story. And then he brought out his checkbook and then my checkbook, <laughs> it got really loud. It changed, it shifted the way that the uh, speech was going. He scans the audience. He looks at everybody, he makes eye contact, makes sure that everybody connects with him, that they understand where he's speaking from and what he's speaking about. Then he, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He shifted my mindset, and the goal of a speech is to get something out of the listener or the audience. And when he talked about his story at Chili's, it reminded me of when there was a veteran at a restaurant, and I wanted to thank him for his service, but I didn't want to be awkward, or I didn't want to make a scene in the restaurant, so I decided not to. But now after hearing this story and how it touched you, Next time I will. Thank you. <clears throat>
goes for our second evaluator, Sean Esler. Okay, for our third evaluator, Ben Dew. And for our fourth evaluator, Tim Lieber. Right. Only bad guys please sit except Sean Tucker. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.